Let's go, my boy Ty here, man. What's up with you, bro? You know, making some things happen on this YouTube shit, trying to, you know, make the platform big. I feel like right now, you know, I'm just been grinding and shit. A true, true, true. So you just got off work, right? Yeah, you know, you can tell a little bit, right? Shit. Yeah. You know. That's work out city. What's good? That's just says what your hoodie say, Snap City. Oh yeah, that's Snap City. That's that that's that Haas Twins approved shit apparel. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Haas Twins too, man. Uh hopefully one day I get them on the podcast and we could bust it up, man. Talk about their journey. I'm a big fan. Um should be hilarious as hell. I already know. <laughs> so my thing is, because I, I I noticed you're at night out, and I, like I see you like to drop a lot of your content around this this time of day, or you like to pr- produce a lot of your content, so to speak. So to the people that's not really familiar with your uh, YouTube channel, can you kind of give them the rundown on that? All right. So first off, for anybody that you know is a football fan or even a basketball fan, now let me tell y'all first off before I get into it, I'm not a basketball savant. All right, I fuck with the Celtics. You know what I'm saying? I'm not somebody who can tell you how much somebody scored three, like 30 games ago and what was the potential, all that shit. Listen, man, you can come to my channel for pure entertainment. And for one, the way you can find me is type in It's Only Right 24 and YouTube. Also on Twitter, you can type in 24 at 24 It's Only Right. Uh, what I do on both platforms is on Twitter, I uh, basically, uh, you know, share my thoughts like anyone else. I may rant from here to there. Some of y'all might find that entertaining. Look, is I've, I'm a p- very passionate sports fan, especially when it comes to football. So when you come to the Only Right channel on YouTube, you're basically going to hear me talking about the Carolina Panthers and whatever team we decide to shit on that week. All right? <laughs> so, I mean, unfortunately, the you know, unfortunately, you know, the host here with his, uh, with his team, we're going to end up doing that later throughout the season. But, you know, if you want to come check out the content, yo, feel free. Whether you like it, dislike it, don't matter. Support your boy, you know, so we can make this platform big. You know what I mean? But that's pretty much it, man. Correction. We're going to end up playing y'all week two, and we're going to end up getting a dub week two. So we can just we can just scratch that already. So you don't even got – week one, I think y'all going to win. Week two, you just chalked it up, y'all one and one. But we going to talk about that later. So I just want – just say uh, first things first, bro. You know, I'm proud of you, man. Uh, you know, like I said, you're making a name for yourself amongst the – because there's a there's certain type of communities in YouTube. Uh, there's the fitness community. There's the comedy community. There's the animated movie. There's the I'm going to teach somebody how to do this. Like if you want to type in something where, hey, how do you sharpen a pencil without a sharpener? There's videos on everything that you can learn, you know what I'm saying? So you're in the, the so-called sports talk community, almost like a – a commentator, if you will. Um, so what made you want to really dive into that? Well, first off, because I didn't feel like there was that much publicity for my team, uh, mm-hmm. specifically Carolina Panthers. I felt like we were getting shitted on throughout the uh, – even during Cam's tenure. Uh, the only thing they would talk about was the way he dressed. And uh, the only time we really got any kind of, you know, notice was when we went to the Super Bowl. And I feel like my team deserves some light. And it's not too many of us on YouTube to really talk about our team. So I feel like I can, you know, you know, be a part of that and our growth as a football team. So it's, especially since we came into the league late, what, mid-90s, we're not like these other teams. You go in here, check out the Raiders or the Packers. They got a bunch of subscriptions and whatever, people that follow them, probably a bunch of bandwagoners, but it is what it is. But when it comes to us, I just wanted to provide some content from my point of view, which I feel, well, I, which I feel like is a uh, very genuine and uh, you know sometimes hilarious. If you, you know, I mean, you fuck with the rants, but you know, that was really that's pretty much it because I didn't feel like my team was getting that much light, and I wanted to show that on my side. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of us do say that because, like I said, we live in the Jersey slash Philly area. Or I guess you could say the tri-state area because you're up in PA. And it's like, if you're not a yeah. fucking Steelers fan, a Giants fan, they cover the Jets more up north, an Eagles fan, and they really don't really cover your team unless you get, like, one of the big fish or unless you have, like, a crazy season. And even then, you know, it, it, has, it, it takes something out of the north for them to really talk about it. So, you know, 
part of what you do right. is dope because like I said, you give your own take on it, but you're also knowledgeable enough about your team to where you're not just spitting shit out there to, yeah. you know, hopefully get some new views or anything like that. So my thing is, have you noticed people doing that when it comes to your Panthers? I'm pretty sure you watch other Panther channels, correct? Yeah, of course. I mean, ever since I started my channel, which was like last year, but, you know, I decided to go another route and then ended up coming back. Um, yeah, you have a lot of people that do clickbaits and shit like that. You know what I mean? But for 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 the most part, you know, since since I like rebooted my channel, I actually unsubscribed from these other YouTubers that were sharing Carolina Panther thoughts. Not because I didn't fuck with them necessarily, but it was because I didn't want to uh, have my, you know, my perception spoil you from somebody else's. Because sometimes you might end up spilling that out. Um, unintentionally, and it's not necessarily your natural feel on how your on how your team is. So, you know, I had to do that. That was one thing I had to do, and you know, I feel like it's more genuine at this point because we all should have different point of views. I do get pissed off at times when, because I work so much, I, I do get pissed off at times when I do have like content ideas when it, in regards to my team, and then someone else posts that or they mimic what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So I've seen that recently, which bothered me. But, you know, you got to keep grinding and just produce your own content within the means of it. So, you know, that's 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 pretty much it. But it does get aggravating at times, you know what I'm saying? Tell you. So what – Um, and I get this question a lot, too, me living in Jersey, being a Bucks fan. What made you become a Panthers fan from East Orange, New Jersey? <laughs> Or, or, all right, so, so first off, I didn't really get into any kind of sports uh, until my, like, what, 11, 12 years old. Growing up, my household was not a – What did you say? It's a all, right. all right, so, basically, back in the day, I didn't really grow up in a household that was uh, full of football fanatics or, my, you know, my mother or my pops. You know, my pops was a street dude. He didn't really care too much about sports anyway. He always felt like, you know, somebody hit him the wrong way. He going to do something, you know, whatever. I mean, so I didn't really get brought into sports until I started playing Madden. And I can grant that to my uncle and my cousins. Started playing Madden. You know, I'm a favorite color blue. So, you know, as a kid, I'm like trying to find the teams, with, you, know, you know, whatever attracts me to play with them, right? Wasn't the Giants because I heard them. I heard, even though I wasn't in the sports, I heard about them all the damn time living up in North Jersey. Um, clearly not the Jets. The color green bothers me unless it's fine, unless it's money. And you know, my favorite animal is the Panther. So I started playing with them in Madden, right? And then I started. I started to watch the games. Did I really know much about it? The first play that I seen, ironically, was Steve Smith returning the punt. I believe this was in his first couple years of being on the Panthers. And I just fell in love after that, like that excitement that I got. I didn't even know that was my team until that very moment, like just seeing the kind of player he was. And, you know, ever since then, I've been rocking with him. I want to say back, what, 2002, 2003, maybe? Yeah, something like that, 2002, 2003. And I've just been rocking with him ever since. You know, I, I got some shit. You know, you don't really hear too many uh, Panther fans being around, you know what I'm saying, especially in the area we live in. So, you know, everybody, of course, thought I was just, you know, Rod the best player or when Cam came to the team and thought I was a Panther fan. And, you know, you got to kind of, you know, you know, show how much of a fan you are or whatever, but fuck all that. You see, I, I roll with my team through the bad times, through the good times, and even till today. Of course, I have my indifferences on how the organization moved and how certain players moved, but, you know, that comes with the territory of being a fan of a football team. So, but, yeah, man, I will say, like, you know, back in 2002, 2003, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So riding that high of going to the first Super Bowl and like coming real close to winning it, like uh, within a field goal, like what was your expectations of the mm. team moving forward? Because at that point you were pretty young, and that was what Tom Brady's yeah. second Super Bowl or his first? Uh, second, because the first one I think it was against the Raiders. I want to say. The first one was against the Rams. The Rams. Okay. The Rams. Yeah, that was the, that was the second no, one. Where yeah, y'all played the Raiders, right? Yeah, we Y'all played the Raiders, back. right? Yeah. That was Joe. So, that was Joe. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. had Dell home. Mm -hmm. And I know you've never really been a fan of Dell home. So, y'all coming off that Super Bowl loss, and then y'all go through 
some up and down seasons, seasons where y'all are, you know, y'all contending in the playoffs and then seasons where y'all aren't too good. And y'all have a little bit of a stretch where y'all aren't bad, but y'all are in the middle of the pack. Now, to a lot of NFL fans, like the casual fans, they may think, well, we're still competitive. We're not horrible. But to real football fans, you know, this this middle of the pack shit ain't doing nothing for us. So we either need to stink um, up the joint to try to get that pick, or mm-hmm. we need to make sure we get over the top and get get something out of this. In 2011, I believe it was, y'all wind up doing just that. Because I believe the year before that, y'all took Jimmy Clausen in the second round. He was hot garbage, never stood a chance. <laughs> Um, I don't know damn shout out to Jimmy Claus, and he's probably a quarterback coach somewhere. God bless him. But, uh, you know, it is yeah. what it is. It's called what it is. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I don't want to say y'all look up and get Cam, but y'all get Cam. Mm-hmm. Looking back on that, y'all losing the Super Bowl to the Patriots. Y'all getting Cam in 2011. Yeah. Now Cam Newton is a part of the fucking New England Patriots, bro. Like, could you have wrote a better script than that? Uh yeah, stay with the Panthers win the Super Bowl. But <laughs> I mean, for for him, <clears throat> that's a good look for him because honestly, we did him dirty. All in all, the way I feel about this whole situation, it, it was just fucked up the way he did him. I think when you when you have a player like Cam Newton, a little bit better, a little bit better. Let's do it like this then. All right, but, all right so I was just upset they didn't get his man of weapons, and at the time when they, they and they just decided to release him, and not only did they release him. They released him too late to where as though he couldn't even get a proper contract that I felt like this man deserved. Although, you know, he's been hurt, so he would have had to prove himself. I think he would have got paid more than just, like, you know, what, $8 million or $7 million, whatever the hell it was, mm-hmm. the itty-bitty contract. And now, un- unfortunately, you know, hopefully we don't have to, have to play this man if we make it to the Super Bowl, you know. But I wish him, look, I wish him long-term success, you know what I'm saying? But... At this point in time, I am a little disgruntled on how they handle the situation, like mainly because when you have stars that are free agents or that become free agents, right, it's going to be tough to try to swing them to come to Carolina, especially how you did Cam, and they all seen what he did. Like, you can see when he got signed by the Patriots, everybody on Twitter or Instagram was shouting him out like, oh, shit, I mean, he got signed by the Patriots, I mean, I mean, so – it just everybody knows what he brings to the table, and it was just like yo, no, it was the situation was fucked up on how they handled it. Wish they could have handled it a little bit better, but you know, as a fan of the Panthers, I am a Cam Newton fan, but I'm also a fan of the Panthers first. So you gotta be able to move forward with that, and you know, work with what you got. Hopefully, this isn't a season where we end up getting trashed like last year when Kyle Allen was our quarterback. But going forward, I'm looking for bright things from the future for our team. And hopefully that it goes that route. That's good, man. Because my thing is, well, when I think about those kind of situations, when you said that y'all did Cam dirty, who do you think did a worse job around their franchise, y'all or the Colts, when it came to Andrew Luck? Well, as it pertains to the players putting around, I mean – Okay, first of all, they did. I feel like they did Cam more worse than they did Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck just flat out retired. Um, yes, he could have helped him out and put him in the third. What'd you say? I said his body couldn't. Him and Cam, like Cam, wants to push through it. Andrew Luck's body could not hold up anymore because he was just taking them damn beatings, taking them beatings. Like they refused yeah, to get tough. this man an offensive line until it was too late. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yep. Cam's situation, mm-hmm. not that your old line was worse. It's just that his style of play. Andrew Luck would try to do the same thing in the open field, too, as far as, like, you know, when he's running. Sometimes he'll slide, but other times, like, look, this linebacker going to get out my way whether he like it or not. That catches up <laughs> to you. Right, right, right. But that's Cam's style of play. Andrew Luck would do that when the play broke down or when he's seen, like, oh, this is the only positive yards I'm going to get. But the majority of the time when he was banging bodies, he was getting sacked or smacked a lot of the times in the backfield, you know. So, And it's not that Cam wasn't. It's just that Cam's playing style came back to bite him in the ass, so to speak. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, was, I would say that too. But, bro, like, I mean, when you play like that your whole career, 
I mean, I, I understand how that can catch up to you. But it's tough. Like, they're, first off, all right. First off, let's just say getting hit is not fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially when you're when you're not prepared to get hit like that. Like Andrew Luck did for the majority of his career, getting sacked multiple times. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Cam knew it. He would look for that contact. And, you know, that's just how he played. First off, they're two differently built quarterbacks. I'll say that. Um, I feel like it's kind of like, well, I'm not a nutritionist or no damn scientist, but they say when your body gets used to certain things, it kind of is able to withstand those hits or whatever. I don't think Andrew Luck was ever that kind of quarterback that would go out and actually have, like, design runs to, like, run people over or just, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Cam did. I think they're just too built. They're built differently. Uh, Andrew Luck, you know, unfortunately, if his style style of play was – what happened? Yeah, Andrew Luck was a big guy, though, man. Cam is 6'6", 6'5", 250, bro. Andrew Luck is 60, 60, 60, <laughs> oh, well, that's what they say. That's what they say. That's so true. It's not, it's Again, not like he's still, small. You know what I'm saying? It's just, bro, like you, okay. you're not going to be able to keep running head up with these safeties and these linebackers expecting the outcome to be, yo, I'm playing like Brady 20 years. You know, certain quarterbacks know, oh, he's running at me? All right, well, cool. You can have the sack. Yeah. I'm not going to let you smack me. I'll go down, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. do a deep thing. But, you know, the mentality behind Cam, and I, I get what you're saying about how they did him dirty, because they didn't save Cam from himself a lot of times. They encouraged it, and it's like, you know, and I get like a lot of the referees are looking at it like, you know, when linebackers and everybody's getting these cheap shots off of them. I think Greg Olson said it like, a couple years ago, he's like, man, he's, he's the quarterback. He got to call these things. It's like, yeah, but if your quarterback's known, his nickname is Superman, he's six foot six. He's a freak athlete at quarterback. You know, I don't think we've ever seen anything like Cam at quarterback as far as his, phys- his, his physicality goes. You know what I'm saying? So when they see his style of play and they made the rule, you know, with Kaepernick, Russ, Cam, and them, yo, when a quarterback does that pistol, he's, he's a running back now. So now you now it's open season. So when that happens, like, you know, referees aren't going to – they're they're not going to call the game like he's a quarterback. They're going to call the game like, yo, listen, yeah, y'all helmets collided, but you ain't a quarterback right now. You're running the ball with the ball tucked in your arm. So I get what you're saying about how the Panthers so did him dirty, so to speak, because, like I said, like, you even notice with Lamar, they run a lot, but he's not just going up the middle, always running – let Mark Henry and them do the dirty work, and then like, yeah, come on, get get some get some yards real quick. But yo, you better slide, you better get your ass out of the bounds. You don't have nothing to prove to nobody. And I think that that's what y'all did a a bad job at telling Cam, like, yo, Cam, you're Cam Newton. We need you. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't need you to prove that you this big, right. strong, knocking heads off. You feel me? Ah, yeah. uh, I, I I hear you, bro, but. You, like like that Cam say I'm taking one of Camism. You can't take the what you say. You can't take the roar out of the lion or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. Whatever the hell he said. Look, man, I'm not I'm not gonna dispute that this guy shouldn't have uh, started sliding or running out of bounds early in his career. But bro, like you've been on the field, dog. Like we all been on the field. Like it's for me. I'm not that kind of guy to run out of bounds. Like, I know he the quarterback and it's different or whatever, but I don't know. Like, when you play like that the whole time, look, what I'm saying is this. Cam, Cam was going to do what he wanted to do. If it was a first down play that needed to get done, it was third and one or some shit on the goal line. Yeah, Cam might jump over somebody. Yeah, Cam might dunk on somebody's head like he did in, uh, in uh, I think it was Tennessee. Uh, or no, Houston, one of them. Yeah, I mean, look, man, look, some people are built like that. And, and going back to your point when, it, when we were talking about Andrew Luck and uh, Cam Newton, Cam Newton was able to uh, elude pressure at times. I think he was better at that than Andrew Luck, too. I mean, let's not let's not get that twisted. I mean, yeah, they both big and they both can take hits or whatever to a degree, or, I mean, or, you know. But if you look at their po- – how they were in the pocket, operating in the pocket, Andrew Luck, although he had a bad line, it's not like he was out there trying to shimmy and juke and get out of the way. Cam was able to do that. I believe it was one play where we were playing the Patriots. It could have, I think it was like 2014 or 2015. This man shook everybody on the Patriots just to get like, what, 13 yards? Mm-hmm. And he was way, way deep in his in his backfield. So, I mean, it's okay if you – if. Andrew, the reason Andrew Love got hurt is because he wasn't able to lose pressure and his team 
it was like a half and half for us to blame. Cam, I can't, I can't, I can't say that it was his fault necessarily the whole time. I think I, I, if I had to, it would be the same. But damn, bro, it's, it's tough not having Cam run up the middle if he can do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's tough. Like, especially when you don't have nobody else around him. Like, if John just, I can, I can, I, I can count so many times that Cam do it have more rushing yards than Jonathan Stewart, bro. How and yeah. Jonathan Stewart's a big boy. Like, how how is that even possible? You know what I'm saying? So. It's tough. It's tough to it's tough to really say that. Maybe I'm biased because I'm a Panthers fan. Hey, it is what it is. But I mean, nobody can ever refute that the Panthers did not do him dirty in regards to what, what how did they release him and stuff like that. I look at Ben Roethlisberger. That man's been hurt for the longest time, and he's still on the team. Yeah, he's a Super Bowl champion. But bro, when it, when is the time that you call quits? Ex- hey, tell me this. Tell me this. Uh, Q, like when they come to um, Joe Montana. Not comparing towns, but when it comes to Joe Montana, didn't they let go? Didn't the um what the Chiefs was it? No, the uh 49ers, didn't they let go of Joe Montana and he ended up on the Chiefs? Things between or- Joe Montana and uh I think his name is Joe Walsh, the 49ers coach at the time, got real, real, real bad. I don't think things between Ron Rivera and Cam got bad. I think things got bad between Cam and the new or- the new direction of organization. I didn't have uh Richardson okay. got anymore. Y'all don't have Dave Gettleman anymore. And, you know, the new regime nope. was looking like, yo, this nigga's hurt all the fucking time. One, two, we don't know what mm-hmm. we're going to get out of Cam. Three, and I'm not paying this nigga the rest of his damn contract, and I don't know if he's going to be there or perform the same level. So it, it was just two different things, but it, it does draw some comparisons when someone stops believing in you. Hey, and look, hopefully we don't end up paying for it. Because we all know Teddy ain't the most, uh, you know, durable quarterback either. But I do, yeah. I do respect the skill by him not being able to turn the ball over. So, you know, we'll see how that end up going. But you know, hopefully, I wish Cam the best in New England. You know, but if we played on best believe, I'm gonna blow the motherfuckers out. So we gonna uh, end it like that. Well, let's switch gears for a second because you also did mention earlier that you are a Celtics fan. Now, Tahir. You called me earlier in the week, I believe. You were talking about <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you were talking about our, our, our game one loss to to the yeah. to the Golden Rockets. And y'all was up two yeah. zero. Game one entire here. Yeah. This happened last series. Um, you know, y'all doing mm-hmm. y'all thing right now, but we'll see. I didn't expect it to be a game seven. And I damn sure didn't Maybe expect it to be. Look, I fuck with Jason Tatum, but I didn't expect Jason Tatum to fold the game away like he did, man. So we got to talk about this, bro. Yeah. Like, I want you to kind of break down what you saw from the squad game six, and then we can talk about mm-hmm. what we expect from them game seven. I bet. I'm going to get into it. So first off, I want to say Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown was able to carry us throughout this entire game. Okay, he throughout the entire mistake. series. An idiot mistake at the end of game six. He had five seconds left. Yes. Okay. So, the, my problem with what's going, what's going on with my team at this point in time is that we turn the ball over too damn much. It's like, like if you look at all the games that we even won, we've turned the ball over at least over fifteen times every game, and that 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 was the main problem in Game Six as well. Like those times when JB was on, uh, when Kyle Lowry was on JB in the post or whatever, he would get the ball ripped from him. Same thing with Tatum, he would get the ball ripped from him. Marcus Smart get the ball ripped from him. I just honestly think, look, look, Toronto got a good team again. They are the champs. I mean, no matter how I want to say that Kawhi Leonard was on the team when they won when they won the um, the finals, but look, man, Game Six. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> We didn't get scoring from the people or from this person that I believe that we should have gotten scoring from, and I'm talking about Kimball Walker. Uh, I believe going into the third quarter, this man was one for eight, and it continued on into the overtime possessions. Um, he was a master of the buzzer beater throughout game two to game six, and I expected a lot more out of uh, Kimball Walker. But collectively as a team, um, we turned the ball over way too damn much. And I think that was the downfall. That last – that play where Jason Tatum threw it to damn Nick Nurse in the corner, let me say this. For one, mm-hmm. I, I can't tell whether or not he was really on the line. Let me say that. Because if, if that was the case, then they should have definitely – we should have shot some free throws or something in that case. But Jason Tatum, 
J- Daniel Tice is right there. This man is six nine. Nick Nurse probably not even six fucking two. Like I think you can tell the difference, especially from what they were wearing on who's on whose team. Um, I think that was the mental error on Jason Tatum. And not saying that we would have won the game, but it definitely didn't help us when he threw the ball out of bounds and costed us a possession. Now, I'm not going to say that that costed us the game, but what I will say that did contribute to the loss. So mm-hmm. I'll say this. Going into going into uh, game seven, I expect us to try to shut down Kyle Lowry. And I know it's tough for me to say that because I don't even think Kyle Lowry is a top five point guard in this league. But this man, I got to give credit where credit's due. This man is able to get fouls like crazy, like whether it was flopping or whatever the case is, he's able to get fouls when he drives to the paint. And Kimba can't hold him. He's just too small. Okay. No. I'm on the phone. All right. Fuck yeah, you. I feel you. Because I think about the Daniel Tice uh, slash – uh, that pass, I seen them kind of complaining about it at the end of the game. And I'm just like, yo, look, Nick Nurse, whatever you want to say about him, I guess y'all wanted him to get fined or whatever for supposedly being on the line or trying to distract Jason yeah. Tatum. Bro, one thing we do know about sports, any sport, bro, other teams are going to try to find ways to get the advantage. So if Jason Tatum is thrown off by Nick Nurse, who is the head coach, standing on the sideline that close and doesn't see this big-ass white boy standing next to him in a green uniform. Mm-hmm. Listen, I'm not saying that yeah. I understand what Jason Tatum is going through, but listen, bro, what's on Jason Tatum? Because he could have <laughs> made the pass earlier when Daniel Tice was by himself prior to him even trying to cut to the basket. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I... I you know what? That's another... That's- oh. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, my bad. Go ahead. Uh, no, I'm just – like I said, I just thought that, you know, because y'all came back and it looked like the game was pretty much sealed. And then out of nowhere, two or three turnovers happened. And then the Raptors didn't score. And then y'all didn't score for, like, two or three possessions. And then they scored, like, two threes. And I'm like, the hell? Like, <clears throat> I kind of want to say it's fatigue. But I think what happened was that this this team is still a relatively young team. Now, whether whatever we think about the the Raptors winning the ship last year, even though the Warriors was hurt, we we if we know if the Warriors is healthy, they would have won it. But still, they won it, so they had that championship pedigree. They know what it means to grind out a series, right? Um, yeah. Bro, I think fatigue kept caught in, and I feel like the young players, which is damn near the whole team, they kind of got lax being up 2-0 and feeling like you did the series in the, in the bag. Uh, so you think Raptors are going to take this? Uh, no, no, I think I think y'all still got it in the game seven, but I think y'all, exert, y'all exerted a lot of energy that may hurt y'all against the Heat. Well, I'll, I'll say this. I'm going to say this. In that game six, the starters were in the game, I believe, since the end of the third or the middle of the third quarter, right? They didn't come out at all, okay? Now, it's unfortunate that our bench is trash, uh, you know, from the due to the public guy. They say that the bench is trash. I don't believe that. I think we are able to rotate in some guys. I just think that we get too dependent on our starters to do much. Now, it's unfortunate that, you know, we don't have Gordon Hayward. But I will say he definitely would have played a part in us closing this series out earlier. Um, simply because of how he facilitates the ball, how he's able to score, and how he's healthier from where he was when he, you know, from last year when he broke his damn ankle, I believe it was uh, two years ago. So, so looking at this, I feel like we do have a chance to, you know, win this game seven. Like I said, we're able to shut down Kyle Lowry. Pascal Siakam, I'm not necessarily worried about because this man is clearly not a number one option. Um, Fred Van, the two people I'm worried about the most is Fred Van Vliet because of his shooting ability and also Kyle Lowry. Uh, we're able to contain those two cats and force Pascal to score, drop 30 points and force um, Marcus Saw Ibaka and Norman Powell to score the points. Then, yeah, I, I can definitely see us winning. But until then, uh, Kyle Lowry's a veteran. He's too crafty to get those fouls in the paint. 
Um, I'm not gonna blame the refs because I am an advocate of blaming the refs when it's when it's when I'm you know when it calls for it. But we gotta be able to we gotta be able to play through that. This isn't our first time being, you know, close or even you know going getting into the Eastern Conference Finals. You gotta remember, Jason Tatum's rookie year, we ended up in the Eastern Conference Finals. So mm-hmm. I look at it like this: we have we have pedigree as well. We have that winning culture in Boston. We gotta be able to utilize that. And right now, I don't, I don't see it defensively. Offensively, that can always be fixed because we got a team full of great shooters, at least our starting lineup. Yes, Marcus Smart surprised me. Will he go into this game shooting the way he did prior? I don't know. But Kimba got to be able to step up. And I believe that was the only reason why Marcus Smart was scoring like that because Kimba couldn't really, you know, get it going when he was supposed to. Also, Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum's been laying an egg when it comes to scoring as of late. When well, I want to say these last three games. The first game, he came out good. Second game, he came out decent. Um, but going into this game, game six, it was the Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart show. I need more shooting from Tatum or better shooting and quality shooting from Tatum. And I need them buckets. I need them baskets, the, the balls to fall in the fucking, uh, in the net for Kimba. This man is a great shooter as well. His mid range. I need him to see, I need to see more of that step back mid range shot that he'd been doing that, that clutch shit that he'd been doing that I really didn't see much in game six. Like I said, we're able to contain Fred Van Vliet, Kyle Lowry and, um, you know, get some, get some buckets to fall. I think we can come out with a victory. We can't blame the rest or get disgruntled from every call that we don't get. We could just move forward that way. And I'm sure Brad Stevens is coming up with a good game plan for us to win because right now it seems like when we it's going back and forth right now, we win, we lose. We win, we lose. So hopefully we come out with a victory in game seven and we can go on and see the heat. What do you think? I, I'm going to ask you a question. Now, out of curiosity, when it comes to the heat, right, how do you think we match up? against the Heat if we were to win game seven. Despite the fatigue factor. Six. Mm-hmm. Let me ask One why. Thing that the Heat have showed me and that y'all, I thought y'all had, but y'all didn't. And I can't say y'all didn't, mm-hmm. but, you know, being up 2-0 and then 2-1, you know, that's not 3-1, but it's like you still are in the driver's seat when you're up 2-0. When you're up 2-1, you feel me? Before the series is tied, you're still in the driver's seat, you feel me? And then y'all was up 3-2 with a chance to close it, and now it's 3-3. You feel me? So, so many yeah. times you're in the driver's seat, like, y'all y'all didn't put y'all, y'all – like, y'all have a lot of gifted scores, whether it's Kemba, Jason Tatum, uh, you know, uh, Jalen Brown. Um, Marcus Smart, when he wants yeah. to be, but I'm not going to call him a gifted scorer. I think he's a really good all-around player. You know, he had 31, 11, and 10. You feel me? But Great defender, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all team, First team all defense. You feel me? Could have possibly won defense player yeah. of the year. Yeah. Maybe. I wouldn't put him up against uh, Giannis and AD, but he made a good case for it, bro. Here's my thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When Jim Butler is going up and down the court, after he just stared Giannis in the face and gave him the business before Giannis won one one plan, after he didn't stare the uh, what's the bull from the from the Pacers name what's his name I can't even remember his name but he was snapping T.J. Warren T.J. Warren T.J. Warren was snapping a bubble and then Jimmy got wind of him and just snapped on him in the playoffs. What y'all gonna do about that? Are y'all gonna just put Jalen Brown on him? Or are y'all gonna put Jason no. Tatum? Even, First even, off. even so, like even if you're switching with Jimmy, it's like. Jimmy is – bro, Jimmy is out for blood. He's a shark in water. And them sitting back watching this, and, bro, we give uh, – we gave Coach Spolstra a lot of stuff for coaching Bron, D. Wade, and Bosch in their prime. But, yo, he, he's proven he's a great coach. You feel me? I think, in my personal belief, he might be a better coach than Brad Stevens. Um, He is a better okay. coach than Brad Stevens. So – Okay. My thing is, when it comes time for it, can y'all make the adjustments? When it comes time for it, yo, who's going to go bucket for bucket with Jimmy Buckets? Who's going to be able to look him in his eyes like, nigga, I'm not scared of you, bro? Because, look, I don't know if Giannis is scared of him, but he looked Giannis in the eyes and said, you can't fucking guard me. And then went down there and got a bucket. Went down there and got 40, got 30, got 25, got another 40 clip. Who's going to look Jimmy in the eyes yeah. when he's out there snapping 
talking motherfucker this, motherfucker that. Yo, you can't motherfucking guard me. Yo, switch switch the matchup. If y'all don't switch the matchup, I'm getting the ball again. Matter of fact, since they switch the matchup, I'm still shooting the ball. Bro, who who got smoke for him on that team? I think Jalen Brown could do do something, but I haven't seen that from Jalen. Bro, Kyle Lowry was was talking. Kyle Lowry is a great player, but Kyle Lowry is not the the trash talker. The psych he can't play the psychological warfare that Jimmy can play with you at the same time as getting buckets. So mm-hmm. if Kyle Lowry was able to do oh. that with Marcus Smart and, and Pemba, <laughs> I'm just like are, are y'all switching. You know what I'm saying? Like, so my, my bad, bro. You can take the floor in this one, but it's just a question I had to ask, you know? No, I I, I got you. Now, now here, I, I had the clip loaded and ready to blow, right? So check. <laughs> first off, you said it just you said it yourself. Marcus Smart, first team all defender. Mm-hmm. First team all defense. He will be guarding Jimmy Butler's. You know, that that's just the facts of the matter, okay? I mean, when it comes to offensive player that we really what'd you say? You don't think that's a mismatch? Absolutely not. Are you kidding me? I mean, look, man, Marcus Smart is what, six three, six four? Jimmy Butler Jimmy's six seven. Up. Look, I'll take that matchup all day. Why? Yeah, he's six 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 seven, I believe. So let's 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 I'm not gonna say that Marcus Smart is gonna just um uh, have him go goose say. Hell no. Jimmy Butler's gonna get his buckets, of course. I'm not gonna say that. I will say this Marcus Smart will be a reliable defender on him. I'm not saying that Jalen Brown can't guard him. I'm not saying that Jason Tatum can't guard him. I feel like as a team, when it comes to us, if we, let's subtract Marcus Smart from the equation. Brad Stevens has a system defensively where we play defense collectively, like kind of like uh, Toronto Raptors does, but you can see off rip that is mostly like uh, Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Fleet. Fred Van, Van Fleet. That motherfucker's name is tongue twisted. Like they, they play the passing lane so fucking well. That's what makes them great defenders. Right, and they're able to rip the ball off you. And also, OG Anobi, I'm not going to take nothing away from him. But going into that game with the Heat, I don't believe they can hold us offensively. I'm going to mm-hmm. say that. I think Jimmy Butler's a great defender. I mean, I don't think they can – like, Eric Spolcher, yeah, he might try to do the same thing as Toronto did. But I think we'll be able to come if – we able, if we're able to win this series, we will definitely come out of this series – like, you know, with some with some extra knowledge on how we can take this into the next one. I feel like if we're able to uh, minimize Jimmy Butler, force him to pass, and let the shooter shoot, well, not to let the shooter shoot, but defend the three-point line, we'll be, we'll be pretty good. Now, in regards to coming from for bucket for bucket, we don't have to have one person do that. You want to know why? Because, like I said, we have Jason Tatum, who can score 20 at any time, maybe 30. We have JB, who can drop 20 any time, either a corner three, driving, whatever, Kimba. He hasn't displayed it this last game in game six, but we know what he was in Charlotte. It's not like he's been suffering injuries that will, like, really put you in that mind space of, okay, thinking that he can't provide the amount of buckets that we need. Like, I feel like we have – when it comes to offense, I feel like we have every venue that we need uh, to attack a team. It's just that these Toronto Raptors, they they play good defense collectively, man. I don't trust Tyler Hero trying to – and Bam on the bio was good too, but that's a big. And we, Nathaniel Tice, he, we're not worrying about him like trying to, you know, do everything. You know I mean, he can hit the three, he can get his oops or whatever, but he's not going to be the guy that you pass the ball to and say dominate. So out of bio, unless they're going to put him on Tatum, I really don't. That, that would mean Tice will have a mismatch. So I'm not really worrying about that. You want to put Kelly Olynyk on Daniel Tice? Go for it. You want to put that Kelly Olynyk on Jason Tatum? Go for it. You're going to see what's going to happen, but. Furthermore, I believe we can go bucket for bucket with him collectively as a unit. We, we, we pass the ball. We don't play that ISO game like that. Tatum can do it, but in this series, it's just not looking good for him. So I think going into this next series, if we end up playing the Heat, we'll be continuing how we our game plan, which is passing the ball, finding the open man, shoot, drive, whatever. We are a actual basketball team. We're not these the Houston Rockets where we want to play ISO all day and all that bullshit. That's probably why they lost the night. To be honest with you, because of that bullshit, they actually got blown out, tried to come back, and then the Lakers finished them off. We're not like that. We, we play as a team. As long as we're able to play that, and we got Marcus Smart in the center, uh, at the center, not the center position, but we got him in the center being our heart and soul, we'll be good. We just had a lot of mental laps this series, and the fact that Toronto plays so many different defenses, it fucked us up, so... I think you're going to see a different Boston Celtics team, even with the fatigue factor going into game, going into um, either game seven and also going against the Heat. We're young. 
We will we'll get our legs back. So you do feel like y'all can beat the Heat in a seven-game series, correct? I believe we can beat the Heat in six. Okay. I mean, like I said, I, I, believe, I, I, believe, I believe we can beat the Heat. I don't disagree with it. I just haven't seen it yet. You feel me? Like, y'all have the pieces together, but I just think the Heat have more heart, and they're, they're more grittier. Like, bro, if y'all think y'all get in a physical fight now, bro, next series, what y'all think y'all got waiting for y'all when niggas is rested? That's Jimmy Butler you know you're what talking saying? about, though. That's not like the whole team, bro. I mean, but the whole team is feeding off his energy. We do got Crowder. He's a scrappy defensive player. Like I said, we said Bam. He's scrappy on defense. Uh, you don't got to really worry about Drogic. He'll give effort. Um, Duncan Robinson can score, and he's kind of scrappy on defense. The, the young boy Hero, he's kind of scrappy on defense, and he can score. Like, bro, you got so many different bodies and different rotations that they can throw at. And like I said, Spo is a he's a great coach. So it's gonna be a dog fight, bro. But I got I got the Heat in six. Just go off the strength, like. I feel like y'all match up with them evenly. And me personally, I wouldn't put Marcus Smart on on what's it called because, bro, we, bo- we both know Kemba's a liability on defense. Now, he's even yes. more of a liability if he's having a shooting slump. You feel yes. me? So, if he can't keep up with Goran Dragic, I think this might be the series we'd be like, yo, Kemba, you got to come off the bench, bro. And we got to let Marcus Smart run the point because we can't have Goran Dragic uh, averaging 17 to 20 points, shooting 54% like he was last series, getting five dimes a game with one turnover. Like, what? So, yeah. if he was doing yeah. last series with – and he was cooking Eric Bledsoe. Not only is Eric Bledsoe bigger than Kemba, but he's physically more imposing than Kemba. And he made Eric Bledsoe look dumb. You feel me? So, I wouldn't even waste Marcus Smart's energy. You, you sit down Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, one of y'all niggas is going to figure it out. Whether y'all got a switch <laughs> very different possession, one of y'all niggas is guarding this bull. And on the other side of it, listen, I need y'all to get the buckets back because he a dog, and he's coming for y'all. Whoever's guarding him, he's coming for you. Mm-hmm. That's, just, that, that's the way I look at it. And I didn't mean to cut mm-hmm. you off, but he went and a new boy. The boy and a new newbie, boy, yeah. From the Rockets, he was getting busy. That's not yeah. Jimmy. Like I said, like, bro, Kyle Lowry and Jimmy, to me, they're pretty much the same player. The only difference is Jimmy will get in your head with that trash talk, bro. Mm-hmm. That's just it. Like, Jimmy's letting you know, motherfucker, you can't guard me. And your coach done fucked up. Uh, you feel me? Like, that's just I like this. I like this. I like, I like this. Yeah. I, I like, like this. I like that kind of battle. It's going to be, bro, I, that's going to be a very entertaining series, bro. Because it's, it, it's also going to tell you a lot about Tatum and Jalen Brown. Because <laughs> y'all haven't played anybody in the playoffs yet like that that's going to test your heart. See, you could be skilled all you want. But when somebody's telling you, like, all right, cool, you got them little two points, and then come back down and get buckets, I'm like, yeah, nigga, but you thought I was about to be here all day? Yeah, it's going to be a long day for you, little boy. And somebody just mm. talking. And talking and talking and talking. Even mm. if you're doing good, eventually it's like you try to play their game. So this series, we're about to see what Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are really made of. Because so to me, those are your two best players. I love Kemba, but he's not your best player. Y'all need him. To oh man, that's tough. huh? That's tough. It's tough. That's tough. That's tough. All yeah, right. what you just said. Yeah, when you say. Kimba's not like you know. I, I, I'm 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 gonna go against what you just said, right? Okay. So I do agree with you. I feel like I feel like Tatum is our best player. I will say that. And yeah, I agree with you when you say that we need Kimba to score. Now, Jalen Brown. I don't think the trash talk is going to affect us as much as you think it will. I think we're coached up so well that. You know, that's not – that's I don't feel like that's really going to affect – yeah, Jimmy Butler, yeah. But when we play the Heat, I believe we beat them in our series when we played them throughout the season. Yeah, that's the regular season. I know yeah, it's not playoff basketball. But, I mean, I'm not I'm not afraid of Jimmy. And I don't think they are either. Like, you got – like, I, I got I to gotta tell you, 
we play LeBron James with a depleted Cleveland Cavaliers team. Yes, I know. But we played against LeBron James. No matter, I don't think, no matter what happens or how much shit they talk, I don't think they'll be able to get in Tatum's head. The only thing I am afraid about, I'm not afraid about, the only thing I'm cautious about is that Tatum will probably end up falling into Jimmy Butler's hands when it comes to playing that ISO game. Because that's what fucks up Tatum too. Yeah. He gets too locked in to want to ISO everybody and fucks up the pass and like he passes it to him too late. I think it was either game five or six where this man Marcus Smart had to yell at him like, yo, pass him the ball type shit, right? Yeah. He tried to get on his Kobe shit. I mean, I don't understand that's your idol and whatnot, but yo, it's a time and place for that. And, and by the way, I think if y'all still had Gordon Hayward and I need to cut you off, I wouldn't say that the he would beat y'all, but y'all don't. Because Gordon Hayward has that experience. Yeah, that's yeah, man, that's that's not the problem. I'm telling you, like that extra bench guy, like him come going here, we're coming off the bench is one of the best things we had going for us going into this please playoffs. I mean, hopefully this, this motherfucking ankle ain't swell up next week and we able to play him like game three or something. But it, man, it's it's tough. It's just that it's just the extra scoring and that extra ball handling. You know what I mean? Going Hayward, you get him in a pick and roll on a point guard. This man, don't forget. Yeah, he a white boy and you know all this shit, but. I mean, look, man, he got some sauce to his game, and he's 6'8", bro, like, and he's he's able to drive to the paint still. You've seen him getting his legs back during the regular season, bro. This man had a couple 30-point games, man, and that's off the bench. So, it's like, come on. It's, it's tough, man, but, look, going into that series, I, I don't want to talk too early because we still got to finish off the Raptors, and there's no need what's going to happen there. But, mm-hmm. look, man, if, if it does come to us going against Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat, I, like I said, I see us winning at six, man. Ain't nothing going to change my mind about that just because I believe in the scoring that we have on our team. Defensively, it's going to be a bloodbath just like how it is with the Raptors. Mm. That's good, bro. That's pretty dope. Uh, I feel like, mm-hmm. like I said, it's going to be a very telling series and for Tatum and Brown for years to come, especially for, for more importantly than Tatum and Brown, for Brad Stevens. Because if you can win this series – even if you lose in the chip to whether it be the Clippers or the Lakers, it's it's like, all right, you know, you 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 got there, now the next step is winning it. You feel me? And you got there against all odds. Not against all odds really, but a lot of people don't have them beaten the heat. Now, if he doesn't, I'm not saying y'all gonna get rid of you, because I don't think y'all are, but y'all gonna start looking. I mean, look. I don't doubt it because it's Danny Ainge. You know what I'm saying? Danny Ainge never stops looking for players. He's kind of like me in fantasy football. Like, I'm always trading. I'm always making moves. Like, I'm sure he has a couple moves in the bag, nip tuck, ready to, like, you know, unload players that they showing they ain't got no heart or they showing that they can't ball like we expected them to. You know what I'm saying? I get that. But when it comes to the coaching, I'm going to be honest with you, even if we let go of Brad Stevens, there's no other coach out there that I believe is better than Brad Stevens when it comes to the X and O's. That's just me. You've had Hall of Famers like Charles Barkley. You had Hall of Famers like Shaq. You had Hall of Famers like Kenny Smith. I mean, I said things like, hey, this man Brad Stevens can coach. I'm paraphrasing the course, but <clears throat> everybody <clears> – <throat> excuse me. He's been arguably um, in the conversation for coach of the year. So – I mean, it's going to be tough to try to replace him, so I don't think we'll replace him if we end up losing. But, yeah, you're right. You probably will start looking. But it's going to be tough to try to. It's not too many coaches out there. I, don't, I know Mark Jackson's a tough coach, but I, don't, I just don't see us releasing uh, Brad Stevens. I think it's more so if our players happen to be, like, in that mindset of, uh, you know, wanting to be the best. And I don't necessarily see that out of anybody except Tatum. But Tatum is still young. This man is 22 years old. He's still got time to develop and do more with his game. So, if anything, I want to see more out of Jalen Brown. He's 23, 24 years old. I want to see more out of him. He's more developed physically. I just I want to see the ball in his hands more when it comes to drive. I want him to be more aggressive when it comes to scoring. Um, Tatum and Kemba, they just need to be able to hit them clutch threes and mark it smart, play your defense and hit that corner. Be that Bruce Bowen for us. That's all I care about, man. If we're able, like I said, we're able to go into the game, into the series, if we end up beating the Toronto Raptors with that ideology, we'll be great, man. I mean, it's it's no, it's 
there's nothing in my mind that's telling me that we might lose to the Heat and that we can't give them a run for their money, even if we do end up losing. So that's why I am with that. That's why I am with that. Boston is six. Mm. Put that in the fucking bank. Okay, so we got the predictions for your Celtics for this round and the next round of the playoffs. Now, the predictions for the Panthers season. What do you call it, sir? Uh, look, I'm highly optimistic. I'll say 10 and 6. Okay. And here's why. Okay. I actually, I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm glad you asked that question, sir. I'm glad. <laughs> let me get my, let me get my book ready. So, going into the season, <clears throat> the games that I'm worried about the most is the Saints, mm-hmm. y'all, mm-hmm. and the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Now, everybody else, I feel like it can really be a dub, but that's what me being, uh, you know, you know, humble, in my opinion. I really feel like Teddy Bridgewater is going to do a lot for this team, especially for this offense. Our defense is questionable, of course, because of our, def- our defensive back situation. It's questionable because we don't know if Tahir Whitehead can actually guard a tight end or if he's just a run stopper. We don't know what Derrick Brown's going to turn out to be. We don't know how we're going to work this offensive line. But I do know this. Teddy gets the ball out quick. He doesn't make mistakes. And if he does, they've got a very, very minimal. And we have the weapons. We have the requisite weapons to do what we want to do to a team offensively. And not to mention the coach Joe Brady from LSU. Yeah, you know about Joe Brady at LSU. You've seen that offense, the best offense you've ever seen in college football. Okay? Mm -hmm. I understand Joe Brady and Teddy Bridgewater aren't the same. Of course not. Teddy's not going to be launching a ball like that. But I tell you what, no matter what game plan we go into, Teddy will take us to the promised land along with Christian McCaffrey. I I I I think people when I when I this is this is another this is why I was saying why I started my YouTube channel. Because you won't have analysts say things like that. You will have analysts say, Oh, Teddy's a pedestrian quarterback. Ergo, he went twenty two and twelve in his entire career entire career. Right. Um and and those uh, a couple little losses came from when he was a rookie in Minnesota when he went six and six I believe right so therefore he's been winning he I've seen Teddy I didn't fuck with Teddy back in the day obviously because he wasn't a Panther just to keep it mm-hmm. being with you but now that I had this time to actually see what he's able to do with the Rock and what I seen when he, when he was able to do with the Saints I'm gonna say this and I mean it may be a hot take I feel like we got better weapons than the Saints. Mm. I feel like that. I mean, Michael Thomas is better than anybody on our team. I mean, arguably not Chris Cavie, but whatever. That's a different position. But in regards to uh, weapon for weapon, I feel like we got them beat. I feel like the only position that got us beat that far is, is the number one receiver and perhaps tight end because our tight end situation is a little bit in shambles. Mm-hmm. And this, this and be in, during this season, I feel like we should make a move to go get Zach Ertz because I've seen something earlier today. That I this man said he wanted to be an eagle. Excuse me? I said I've seen it too. Yeah, he said that he wants to be an eagle, but he don't think the feeling is mutual. Mm-hmm. So, I feel like this. I, 30, Zach Gertz, 32 years old. Yeah, he might be injury prone. No lower leg injuries, which is very important for a route runner such as himself. But I believe in this offense with Joe Brady, the spread offense that we're going to end up running, with Teddy being so damn accurate, and with him not being damn near the only offensive weapon that the Philadelphia Eagles have, listen, I believe like if you were to come on our team, you can you can book us for the playoffs instantly. Um, I think we might end up coming third in this division behind y'all and the Saints. Um, I see us fighting for a strong second, honestly, because again, we don't know what time. Look, all that talk about Tom Brady being washed could be um, could be you know facts. I I, ha, I don't believe that, but it could be factual. And you guys do suffer from injuries a lot for some reason every year, God forbid, right? Mm-hmm. But I feel like that'll play a major part in our in our uh, view of going to the playoffs. You can bet that too. Ten and six for the Panthers. Teddy Bridgewater probably gonna throw for over three thousand, close to four thousand yards with this, with this receiving core. Christian McCaffrey gonna go off. DJ Moore going to have more yards than he had last year and touchdowns. Curtis Samuel finally going to get utilized the way he should. And Robbie Anderson, look, blow the top off the defense and do what you do best. We got the weapons, bro. 
It's all about putting this shit together and buying in. With Teddy at the helm, anything's possible for us this season. Yeah. That's dope, bro. That's dope. I got us going 11 and 5. Uh, depends on what mm-hmm. this first game is. If we lose this first game, I got him going second in the division. Um, but if we win, obviously I have us winning in the division because I don't believe the Saints are going to beat us in Tampa if we beat them in New Orleans. Um, and that just means if we if we beat the Saints, then we have a little bit more chemistry early on in the season than I thought we would have. Um, I believe we're going to have a running back by committee with Fournette, Ronald Jones, and Shady. Um, my thing about the whole Brady thing and him being washed up, like, well, how washed is he? Because clearly he's not the same as he was five years ago when he was at his peak. But, you know, my message, I keep mm-hmm. telling people he doesn't need to be. Because last year he last year he needed that he needed to be that. This year he doesn't need to do much because he has so a plethora of weapons at his disposal. All he has to do is just not throw fucking picks and fuck it up. That's just me. Now the defense I believe is going to be a lot more better, sneaky good. I got us being in the, the top ten, right outside of the top ten as far as defense, simply because they're not going to be on the field as much. One and for two. They'll be able to get the ball back to the offense. I believe this offense will be able to score. And us having Gronk and O.J. Howard, two run blocking and pass blocking tight ends, which Bruce Arians pointed out, will use a lot of that personnel to have that extra tight end or extra running back in there. Uh, Shady and Leonard Fournette can uh, pass block. They're good at pass pro, and they're good at catching, something that Ronald Jones isn't good at. Like, so he has a plethora of weapons that he can lean on, and we all know Brady loves his running backs in the passing game. So us having all those at his array, like, I think injuries, and if he goes complete Jameis Winston to where he's just colorblind, he doesn't know <laughs> who's playing for what team, then, yeah, sure. Then, sure, yeah. He, can, he can get that. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, like I, just, like I yeah. said, bro, I just don't see us having under 10 wins. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's, just, that's just me. You know, but the bro, NFC is, I, is going to be it's going to be a it's going to be another fucking dog fight, bro. Like it is every year. Now, if we was in the AFC, bro, fourteen and two. Damn, like, that's 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 uh that's a bit much, don't you think? Nah, if we was in the AFC, fourteen and two, bro. Like, and I'm not uh, even trying. To, I'm, not, I'm not even capping. I'm not. I'm just speaking facts, bro. The AFC is. Weak mm-hmm. duty compared to the NFC, bro. Both you and I know this. But wait, it's why do you say that? Why do you say that? Why do you say that the AFC is weaker than, than uh, you know? I feel like we have the best division of football. Like, why why do you we say do. that the AFC is so weak? They got cats like Pat Mahomes and Deshaun Watson and all them, and all them cats. So, like, what, what is that? The Texans are going to be ass. They're not going to be ass, but they're going to be middle of the pack this year. The Chiefs are going to be the Chiefs. We already know that. And the Ravens are going to be the Ravens. We already know that. Um... Are we hoping on the Chargers? Are we hoping on the Steelers? Like, tell me who else can contend outside of those. I want to say, teams. look, check, check Tennessee, Tennessee. I feel That's like the acquisition Ryan Tannehill last year was a, was a big fucking jump for them. They needed a quarterback. Marcus Mariota wasn't cutting it, and unfortunately, he's on IR with the Raiders, so we ain't got to worry about that on Sunday. Um, who else do we have? We have Denver. No, I won't say Denver because uh, Von Miller is going to be out. Let's let's. I, I'll say the Colts too. Actually, nah. Now, I understand Buffalo. that their defense. Nah, you can say Buffalo, but I don't, I'm not saying the Colts, bro. Because, bro, I like Philip Rivers, but we know we know how it is. You feel me? Like Phillips going to have some really they good got the games, best. and then Phillips mm-hmm. going to also right, throw right. to the other team. He, he just has. He's a gunslinger. You feel me? And like I said, like being – now, look, the Colts, they're not going to win that division because the Titans are going to win that division. The Titans had a good defense, I feel like that a too. really good defense. And then them getting clowny? Come on, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you feel me? That's like, why I had to put them up there. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So, but as far as the two teams that you really expect to make it hard on the Chiefs, Outside of the Titans and the, the Ravens, bro, it's not really. Now, let's go to the NFC. The Saints, us, yeah. the Vikings, the Packers, the Eagles, the Cowboys. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, and that's just seven right there, bro. 
San Fran, did you say them? San Fran, Seattle, possibly the Rams. That's, that's nah, almost 10 nope. teams. Nope. That's almost the Rams 10 is teams. Trash. And then look, look, yeah, Pete, yeah. you said that you feel like y'all going to get 10 wins. That's almost yeah. 11 teams, bro. Right there. Yeah, I, I feel you now. I feel you now, yeah. That would probably make some noise in the AFC. Bro, if we was in the AFC, 14 and 2. Come on, bro. Mm. 14 and fucking mm. 2. But we're in the NFC. I would have to see what division y'all are. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? So that's just, that's just the way I feel about it, bro. You feel me? Like, I feel like that, yeah, that yeah. pickup of Fournette and then the Saints not being able to get clowny, that, that, that sealed it. I ain't gonna say it sealed it, but that that helped us a lot right there because, bro, you're not just gonna be able to tee off on Tom Brady because we gotta pass it, not knowing what the run game is gonna be, bro. Fournette, Shady, and Ronald Jones running back by a committee. We don't need Fournette to be Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Saquon. We don't need him to be that, but he's gonna be mm-hmm. a lot better than, than he was in Jacksonville. In Jacksonville, he wasn't a bum. He had a thousand yards last year. He had 500 yeah. receiving yards last year. You feel me? He was just the focal point of a bad team. Now imagine the run lanes being able to open up. Our offensive line is better. There's more weapons around him. Yeah. I to me, bro, to me it's just common sense. Like, yeah. Okay, we had a quarterback. We won seven to nine last year. We had a quarterback that threw 30 interceptions and had 35 total turnovers. The other team on average was starting in the middle of the fucking field. On average. I'm gonna say this. I'm going to say this, not to cut you off, bro, but I think yeah. it was possible that I could have made it to the playoffs due to, you know, him not throwing on the fucking interceptions. You know what Look, I'm saying? I'll say that. We lost, we lost five games that were seven points, that were decided by seven points or under. Yeah. Five. Now, I'm not saying we can win all those five. Bro, give me three. Give me two. That's nine and yeah. seven. That's playoff. That's playoff. You feel me? So it's just like, bro. Having that motherfucker that you don't have to hold your breath for every time he has the ball in his hands. Listen, <laughs> that's, that's just all I got to say, bro. Like, I really don't got too much rap for motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. I've been be hearing a lot of the people on on uh, on a sports center and all this stuff. They be trying to prey on Tom's downfall and our downfall. It's like, all right, well, listen, I'm not saying we're going to be world beaters. Because I understand how sports works. You feel me? You need that chemistry. You need that time. We didn't have the proper offseason. We didn't have a preseason. But we're not going to be ass, bro. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're making the playoffs, especially with that extra team. Listen, bro. And if we beat the Saints mm-hmm. week one, we might get that bye. We might be that number one seed, bro. I, I want to ask you this. I want to ask you something. Mm-hmm. Now, in regards to your team, right? Talk about Mike Evans real quick, bro, because that man, they're talking about how he has an accurate hamstring injury from last year, right? Mm. Like, do you think that would be play a, a, a big part in y'all making the playoffs or even making it far during his regular season, bro, with Mike Evans not being able to play? I feel like me personally, as far as injuries goes, and this is what I told uh, one of the homies, as long as it's not yeah. Tom Brady and as long as it's not multiple key names, See, if we lose Mike Evans, it, it could be devastating. But when you got Chris Godwin, Gronk, O.J. Howard, Cameron Brake, Shady out the backfield, Fournette out the backfield, you can still make some stuff work. Now, they're going to be able to double Chris Godwin, but guess what? You free up the middle for Gronk, for O.J., free up the middle and the underneath for Shady, for Fournette. You feel me? So it's like as long as it's not multiple ones. Mike Evans has had hammy, mm-hmm. injury, hammy, hammy issues since he's came into the league. So I'm really not surprised that he's still dealing with that. Like, he does look a lot slimmer. He, I think he's been uh, really working on his, uh, his speed as far as track and everything goes, uh, cutting in and out yeah. of his routes. <laughs> so a lot of track stars do deal with hammy issues. And I'm not saying he's a track star, mm-hmm. but that, that can only add on to it. You feel me? Those soft tissue injuries. Um, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. I expect Mike to play some games here. And then they'll probably take it easy some games there where, all right, if it's, if it's nagging them or if it's hurting them, yo, can you just get on the field and distract some people? Because you're still Mike Evans. So can you get on the field? And, hey, we st- we don't know if he's going to chill this week. We don't know if he's going to go off. But we damn sure ain't just going to yeah. sit here and let him go off if he does. So we have to give him that attention. Mm-hmm. You feel me? 
that's my thing. Can you mm-hmm. play dummy on the field? You know what I'm saying? So that's just the way I look at it like that, bro. Mm-hmm. That's just tough, yo, because your, your team is actually, like, stacked. <clears throat> and I was thinking, like, maybe because, like, Mike Evans is, you know, injury prone. I, I can say that now. That he's in mm-hmm. prone because the man hamstring. That's just tough on a receiver, especially. Yeah, like, bro, it's always the hamstring. I don't. You know what I'm saying it's weird. Yeah, yeah, and especially especially because y'all, y'all defense too. Like y'all defense is alright too. Yo, y'all line. I fuck with your front seven. Like, mm-hmm. I don't remember the last time I said that. But like Shaquille mm-hmm. Barrett, I fuck with him. And Don McKen, Vita Vea. Uh, I fuck with um Levante David. He's a beast. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the other boy name? Y'all got Doug, okay, Devin right. White. I fuck with him. Yeah, I mean, so y'all, y'all got a nice front seven, yo. Now, now, in regards to your defensive back unit, like, how you feel about that going into the season? Because, I mean, that's still, to me, looking at y'all team on paper, it still, it still seems like, you know, uh, a, te- a part of your team that somebody can attack. <laughs> I feel like this, right? What hurt our secondary mm-hmm. unit and made us look so bad, one, our youth. We were one of the youngest secondaries in the league. So, when you got a bunch of first and second year guys starting, it's going to be horrible. We got better down the stretch, but it also doesn't help them, even though they got better as the season went on, being on the field more than they have to. And it just, like I said, it goes back to James throwing those picks. Bro, when people know, like, bro, great quarterbacks know, and even good quarterbacks know, okay, we got a rookie on that side, and he wasn't no high-profile guy, we're going to pick him. So imagine having a secondary full of those guys that got potential, but they're still young. They're still wet behind the ears. And they're on the field more than they have to be. So not only am I going to pick on you this drive, but, oh, shit, we got the ball again? All right, cool. Well, that last play worked wonders. I want to see if this idiot falls for the same play. So you leave them susceptible to make the same mistakes or you have to learn quickly on the fly. They got better at that as the year went on. We made some adjustments. We still have the same defensive identity going into this year. We still got top bowls. So us having that same scheme, not having to switch schemes, helps them. Us having that defensive coordinator that is one of the best defense coordinators in the league helps them. Us having a, uh, an offense that's not going to give them the ball, put them back on the field in harm's way is going to help them. And then adding little pieces here or there. You know what I'm saying? It's helping them. You know, we, uh, like I said, with the young boy we got in the second round, Antoine Winfield Jr., uh, I think he's going to be a playmaker. I've heard nothing but good things about him. And, bro, like, I I like where we're going. Now, I'm not saying we're going to have the best secondary, top five secondary, but I think we can move up to top – outside of top ten, in between top ten, top 15. And that's good enough because last year we was at the bottom. So, if you make yeah, that outside, in between top ten, top 15, bro – Come on, bro. What are we even talking about? You feel me? Hey, man. I, see y'all I think y'all front seven is going. I mean, yeah, man. Like I said, bro. I don't know what we're gonna expect out. Of. I mean, I expect a lot out of the guy. I mean, we seen him in college. I mean, one of the best. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm saying, bro. Like, even this, I want to see how his how his play in the college translates to the NFL because you're dealing with better offensive linemen. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not saying y'all got the best offensive line. I'm not saying that. The Falcons do. I'm not saying the Saints do. I would say, honestly, I would say the Colts have the best offensive line. But in regards to that, like, I want to see how he matches up because he is playing in the middle. And we do have some pass rushes surrounding him and shit. So I hope that actually helps with forcing the quarterback up. Because I've seen him in training camp. This, I mean, but of course he was going against our offensive line, which isn't the best right now. But that, that's, that's why it's so tough. Like you can see, our, like it's like if your if your offense was trash or you heard him getting a lot of turnovers in training camp, you know probably understand it was because Jameis was the quarterback. Now I I don't know what you heard in training camp in regards to your corners, but I'm sure it wasn't like nothing crazy like oh yo they shutting Tom Brady down or anything like that. Like I feel like when it comes to y'all front seven, it's gonna help y'all DB so much, kind of like how it, it was with us in uh, 2015, like. Our front seven was so nasty and ruthless. Like, y'all was going to be the same way, especially when Dominic can't be the van being able to put pressure up the middle, which killed Barry. That motherfucker had hella sacks last year, bro. It was like, y'all, y'all, y'all got hella potential to do well on defense, and that's mainly because of y'all front seven. Y'all DBs, I couldn't tell you who back there, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. But but all in all, I know who in that front seven, and I know what kind of habit they can wreck on people. I mean, I look, I see y'all doing some good things. But when it comes to us, we might end up splitting the game with y'all, splitting the game with the Saints. And I feel like we're going to beat the Falcons twice. 
simply <laughs> because I don't believe in Todd. I don't believe in Todd Gurley. I don't believe in that defense um, at all. And uh, Matt Ryan is trash. That's how I feel about it, to be honest with you, whether I'm biased or not. But hey, it is what it is. But yo, um, hold on. All right, bro. So I wanted to do a little. Uh, I wanted to be quiet right there because I don't, so you can edit this part out. I got like four percent on my phone. Got you. So is there any way we can like uh, what's the name? Close this up real quick. Thanks, bro. Like I said, so uh, you know, definitely uh, appreciate you sliding through the podcast, brother. I already told you in the beginning of it, man. I'm very proud of you. What you build it for yourself on YouTube, man. And to anybody out there listening that's not nice familiar verse. with it. I appreciate it, man. You know, anybody out there that's not familiar with my brother's podcast uh, or his, uh, you know, daily video drops on the Carolina Panthers, even if you're not a Panthers fan, go check out his page. It's only right two four. It's only right two four twenty four for you illiterate motherfuckers out there. YouTube, go check him out, man. Hit the subscribe <laughs> right. button. Leave a like, you know, and let them know what you feel. You know what I'm saying? If you're not a Panthers fan, let them know if you feel like they suck or not or if your team is better. Don't be scared to drop your team name down in the comments, but you be talking shit because a lot of y'all weirdos be doing that. Oh, yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, bro, so, you know, it is what it is, man. Like I said, I can't wait for week two because we're going to definitely do this again. We're going to give y'all a nice little week two pregame and a post game. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit, yeah. Who knows, man? We, we, oh, we, yeah. we might be able to – we might be able to – talk about the game as the game's going on. But, you know what I'm saying, we'll, we'll leave that we'll leave that for somewhere in the future, you feel me? But, like I said, my boy oh, T-Pink, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear it's only right 24. I'm your host of the uh, World of Cute Podcast. <laughs> for Ron, man. And we out this motherfucker. All right, y'all.